In this video, we're going to unit test a data source in a GraphQL project. Normally, we'd use test-driven development to develop the data source, but sadly, the common scenario out there is that there is a lot of code and it doesn't have tests. So you may be called upon to write tests for code that already exists with the hope that you won't change the code much, the goal to get tests around it to catch regressions and potential third-party API changes, etc. We are going to go ahead and add the tests after the code is written, but we're still going to follow best practices around testing. Let's unit test a GraphQL data source with Node and Jest and the GraphQL server implementation of your choice. And because we like productivity, we'll be using Vim. Well, NeoVim. Let's go. What's that smell? We have an issue from our manager here asking us to add unit tests for the data source and the hope being that we don't change the code much. This is a common scenario, so we'll hope that the code is testable or we'll have to explain to our manager that we will be rewriting the data source. All right, so let's check it out. Now we did another video where we did unit tests for resolvers in GraphQL. This carries on from that project. So I used that project as a template and created this repo and brought it down. And so let's take a look at the remote. Okay. And let's go ahead and create a new branch and get started. The data source has coverage because it is mocked in the resolvers test, but we're going to add coverage for functions. All right, let's open up our data source file and let's have a look at the package manifest. Now in this project, we're using got as our request library and it is fantastic. So please consider using it and sponsoring the maintainers. All right, we're going to be using a package called knock and knock intercepts HTTP requests. You may be wondering why we don't just stub the return value from got. And that's because we want to make sure that we're calling got correctly. If they change their API for some reason, and we merge a depend bot PR and don't notice this will actually catch it. So it's a quasi integration test. Knock is a fantastic library and I recommend using it and sponsoring the maintainers. All right, let's go ahead and create our test file. We're going to need a fixture that not can use as our reply. So let's go ahead and create that. Curl is wonderful. All right, let's start coding up our test. All right, let's bring in the data source. And got, which we may or may not need. And knock. And let's get our first block set up here. All right, and we just need to check that our roster list is returned because we are destructuring the payload down to the roster list. All right. MLB domain. And 
and we want to reply with the fixture we created earlier. All right, their name. Roster fixture. Jason. All right, let's call the data source. All we need for coverage is to assert that the response is an array because we are destructuring the response and just pulling the roster array off. So we need to make sure we're getting an array and that's useful, but we also want to add value and adding coverage is not the only goal. So we'll also check a field to make sure that we're getting what we want just to be extra sure. All right, let's check out the fixture and see what field we want to use. All right, full name should work. We'll use Adam Kalerik. And we'll go ahead and assert that the full name is Adam Kalerik. All right, well, we do have 100% coverage on our data source, which is great. And so we'll be able to check this in and put in our pull request and get it approved and move on to our next issue. So that's fantastic. I keep my sanity by using a ton of Oh My Zish aliases and several custom functions and several of my own aliases. I try to keep a sanitized version of my dot files up on the what's that smell repo you can check out the oh my zish cheat sheet that has a lot of the aliases that i use and while i'm preparing and putting in this pr i want to thank you for watching i really appreciate it if you would be so kind as to like and subscribe and let your friends know, I'd appreciate that too. There'll be a lot more to come. Let's finish up. All right, we're check things out, make sure they are looking good. We'll go ahead and squash and merge. And now we'll get things set up and ready for our next issue. Good to go. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And now two well-meaning public service announcements from Code Smell. Vim or no Vim, find a way to stop using a mouse or any pointer, you'll thank me in 10 years. Trust me. Look into the science of dark mode. Don't listen to me or all the geniuses on Twitter. I used dark mode for several years and I loved it. But as it turns out, it has a time and a place. Well, I'll let you look into it.